Jeff Zwerink and welcome. Today we're joined by Dr. Eric Thompson. He's a doctor of veterinary medicine, was a practicing veterinarian and working in equine medicine, and he's also a partner in an executive networking organization. And today we're going to be discussing how he thought about the compatibility of science and faith as a veterinarian. Eric, it's good to have you here today. Jeff, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. So I know you've had a, you had spent some time practicing medicine, working on uh, horses, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people think science and faith are in conflict. Science and Christianity are incompatible. As a veterinarian, how did you wrestle with that particular topic? Did you find them compatible or not? You know, it's interesting. I grew up with horses, um, grew up with a love of horses, and that's what kind of led me into uh, pursuing a veterinary medical degree. Um, it, it, before going into veterinary school um, and, and with my experiences with horses, you could see the amazing uh, design that, the, and, and uh, functions that, the, that horses had. I was in, um, I did work with race horses and it was just an amazing uh, animal from the standpoint of being able to, to um, uh, navigate speed over mm -hmm. long distances. So what are, if you could, what are some of the design things that you saw that stood out? Well, the, the musculoskeletal system of a horse and, and their ability to adapt and move quickly um, and to do that over long distances was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of doing this on, you know, you just look at a horse and you look at the small legs and the small, a small hoof and you've got, you know, 1,500 pounds um, of, of animal that, mm -hmm. that are spread over these four little tiny legs. You know, how could that possibly work? Mm -hmm. um, when I got into veterinary school, I started to see how all of these systems work, not only from a musculoskeletal system, musculoskeletal system per se, but how all of the different systems, the 11 ma major systems inside the animal, work together to bring upon that uh, agility and that ability for that horse to perform. Um, just amazing, and, mm -hmm. and how they were uh, so well linked together. I didn't have that opportunity before going through veterinary school. So in one sense, it, it really, if, if anything, it bolstered my faith in a, in a creator that would create something that was so well designed. So is it the sort of thing when you're looking at that, it's not like, oh, we can't explain. It, it, you, it sounds kind of like you're looking at that and saying, wow, this looks like it's put together for this specific purpose. Exactly, exactly, very much fit for purpose. So, if, I mean, I know as a veterinarian, you've had to interact with evolution and there's this kind of idea that evolution and there's God, that removes God. What are your thoughts on that? How did that play out as a veterinarian for well, you? Well, know, it's funny, in veterinary school, it never came up. And, and it was very obvious that animals were animals and people were separate. Even within veterinary school, we had a, a, a zoo practitioner um, uh, as part of the faculty. And so there was never really a question or it never came up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after going out in practice and linking to my earlier experience with animals, it was clear that animals don't um, have a moral conscience. Mm -hmm. um, um, my, uh, my, my lab today will bring in a, uh, um, a dead rabbit um, and I don't look at him and say, how, how bad are you that, that you could possibly do that? I mean, it's part of life. Mm -hmm. And so in, in, in veterinary practice, it would really, it became clear that, you know, I mean, there, there, it was never even a question, to be honest with you. It actually um, didn't uh, blur the faith at all. It even made the distinction between animals and, mm -hmm. and humans separately. Uh, I, I guess, are there problems or difficulties you encounter that says, okay, if there's a creator, why is it this way? Um, I never discovered anything that really, uh, say, undermined my faith from that perspective. So as, as you've interacted with other veterinarians, do they find your faith in Christianity odd, unusual, normal? Does it come up in conversations? You know, when I was in practice, um, it was pretty obvious that I was a Christian. And even with our, the clients that I served, um, it seemed um, at that time, it did not seem to be uh, incompatible. People didn't question it. They, didn't, they weren't troubled by it at all. Um, I think the, the area of practice uh, that I had, there were a fair amount of Christians to start with, mm -hmm. um, but it never became any kind of a, um, an issue in any way, shape, or form. Does being a vet, did being a veterinarian and practicing give you an opportunity to initiate some conversations about Christianity? Well, you know, it, it did. Uh, and I'm not sure I took those opportunities up. I wished I'd had more. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wasn't focused on that, and, and I think with... With where I am in my faith now, I definitely would do that. 
But back then, I wasn't thinking that way. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and, and in, in large part, I think God had sent opportunities past that I didn't take advantage of, that now I am. So if you were speaking to someone who's interested in going into veterinary medicine, has just a passion for working with animals, if you will, what pieces of advice would you give them to equip them and prepare them and encourage them that this is something good to do? Well, I think, first of all, um, God has given us animals for a very important reason, many different important reasons, and especially in companion animal medicine. And frankly, um, in, in large part, horses are companion animals. You know, I think that the whole connection between a nefesh animal and, and I had a really uh, close relationship with horses growing up. And in fact, um, that relationship were, uh, benefited me from the standpoint of I could get and use highly bred but very bad behavior animals uh, to work with me, mm -hmm. that they couldn't work with others because of this kind of connection I had with them. So um, what I would suggest is if, if people enjoy animals, enjoy that connection, is to pursue that field, but do so within the standpoint of, of looking at what God has created for us and how these animals want to be with us and how they want to form a relationship with us. And we can use that as an example as we work with clients that also really lean on and need that relationship, especially in a companion animal practice, um, to, to just uh, reveal the glory of God in that. I mean, it's, 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 it's an amazingly beautiful gift that God has given us.